Hey everybody, Vestmore here, and today we're taking a look at Century Age of Ashes. Now, honestly, this game just came out of absolutely nowhere, but I saw dragons, I saw armoured people, and I was like, yes! So, I figured I'd give you guys a quick rundown of the game, what's available in it right now, as well as my thoughts on it. So if you enjoy the vid, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and uh, let's get started, shall we? So what is Century Age of Ashes? Well, it is a free-to-play, fast-paced, action-packed adventure battler by Playwing Limited, where you essentially ride on the back of dragons and blow each other out of the sky. Now, we love a good arena battler, of course, and the footage you can see in the background is from the second closed beta, which I'm pretty sure ends on March 21st, but no worries if you didn't get to play it. I believe early access is happening pretty soon at the beginning of April. Currently, the game has three classes, but I believe they do plan to add more in. At their base, each class seems to play the same. I don't think that uh, there's any differences when it comes to stuff like flight speed or the power of their basic uh, attack and everything like that. However, each class does have some different abilities. So first off, you've got the Marauder. He's sort of your all-rounder kind of like default pick, if you like. And essentially what he does is he has the signature ability called Hunter's Mark. What that lets him do is you can lock onto a specific enemy and it makes your basic sort of fireball attack start to spit out uh, loads of smaller but weaker fireballs. They do move a lot faster though, so it's a pretty good way to overwhelm your opponents. On top of signature abilities, however, each class does have two support abilities that you get to choose between whenever you start a match. So for the Marauder, he has to choose between Gust, which is essentially like this energy burst that you do that destroys any nearby fireballs next to you and restores stamina, it's like it rewards you for doing so, as well as disables enemy lock-on for a short time. Or you can pick Frostbolt, which shoots out a three-shot burst of frozen projectiles that essentially destroy shields if the enemy has them, or if they don't, you disrupt their steering. Really cool stuff. The second class available is the Wind Guard. This is sort of the healer slash support class, but honestly, it's still a pretty good class if you want to rack up those kills. Its signature ability is something called Salvation Surge, which allows you to absolutely beam it towards one of your allies and give both you and them a shield as well as healing you, as well as reducing your fireball recharge time. On top of that, you've got a choice between Smoke Trial, which lets out a large sort of poisonous smoke screen, really useful for hiding from enemies as well as hurting anybody who does fly through it or you can choose blast which essentially lets out a small projectile that then once reactivated will explode into a large shockwave damaging anyone who gets caught of course and then the third and final class is the phantom now let me tell you when i say this guy's my guy this guy's my guy okay he's, he's so sick Naturally, he is the stealth class, so your signature ability is known as Mystic Shroud. This makes you invisible, good stuff. As well as, if you decide to shoot, it does consume the shroud. However, your fireball will be super empowered and do a lot of damage. This is great, of course, because you can essentially go invisible, get the drop on an enemy, and then just blow them up. And then the Phantom gets the choice between both Mine, which is essentially a sticky mine that you attach to a surface, and then it stays there until somebody decides to fly through it. Now, this one is definitely a harder ability to use, but it can be really, really useful for making traps. You should see on screen right now, I got into like a 2v1, and I essentially baited one of the people through this tunnel with me, and he was full health, and I had two mines in there. He gets destroyed. Really, really good stuff. However, on the larger maps, I like to take the second ability, which is known as Blast, which is the exact same as the Wind Guards one. You shoot out a little fireball and then you can make it explode into this large shockwave. So that's the classes. Each one, honestly, is pretty cool. Uh, I really like the designs for them as well. Like, I especially love the design on the Wind Guard. It's got a really cool kind of like Norse sort of thing going on there. But yeah, each one does play a bit differently, and like I said, Phantom is my favourite. But moving on from the classes, let's get to the game modes. What can you do in this game? So right now, there are three game modes to choose from, with a fourth one planned for later. The first is Carnage, which is your classic sort of 6v6 team deathmatch. Team with the most kills at the end wins the game. Now, the cool thing about Carnage is it's definitely got one of the best maps. Uh, I love it. It's like this castle sort of map right now. 
but the good thing about that map is that there's two power-ups that actually spawn during this game mode. So the first one is the Berserk Wraith, which is sort of like this NPC kind of like phoenix dragon thing that flies around. And if you follow it around and you kill it, you end up absorbing it and becoming Berserk. While you're Berserk, you go absolutely nuts and your fireballs just become super hard hitting, they shoot out super quickly, and you get a ton of HP and shields. You essentially become unstoppable. As you can see from the clip on screen right now, it allows you to just absolutely clean up. The other power-up that you can get in this game mode is called the Drake Piercer, and it's this really big kind of glowing spear that you pick up. And then once you've got it, you hit A to equip it. And then once you've got it out, the next person you hit dies instantly. It doesn't matter if they've got shields, doesn't matter if they're in berserk mode, it, it literally doesn't matter. Next person who gets hit by your attack dies. Certainly nothing revolutionary game design wise, but I just absolutely love the way it looks. And I don't know, there's just something about flying at like these enemy dragons with like this fat off spear in your hand, getting ready to just impale somebody that is just a, a, bit, a bit cool, you know? Anyway, after that, you've got a couple other game modes, like I said. So you've got Gates of Fire, which is another 6v6 kind of interesting take on Capture the Flag. Now, essentially what you've got to do is you get the flag, first of all, but once you've got the flag, you don't take it back to a base or you don't have to just hold it for as long as possible. You have to fly through these gates that appear. It's essentially like a circuit around the map and you have to take your flag through all of those gates and if you manage to, then you win. You win that round. Of course, while doing this, you're gonna have the entire enemy team trying to kill you. So this is a mode where I personally think the wind guard was like a great choice. Because of course you can heal the flag carrier and just make their life a bit easier. Trust me, if you want your team to love you, play the wind guard on this map. But yeah, pretty interesting take on capture the flag. For the next game mode, you've got one called Skirmish. Now, this one is also one of my favorites. It's essentially TDM, but it is a three versus three instead. So it's much smaller scale. This is also true of the map. It's a much smaller arena, which kind of forces you guys to fight. Like you can't run away, really. There's not too much for you to hide behind. You have to just get in there and kill your opponents. And then finally, you have survival mode. This is the mode that is not currently in the game, but it sounds awesome. It's essentially a three team, that's six aside, so six v six v six mode where you essentially have a single life so if you die you're out of the game however you leave behind a soul which your teammates can then pick up take back to base and bring you back in so i can imagine maybe like sticking with your team getting like fun little engagements and just blowing people away and obviously stopping those respawns is going to be like a big thing for this mode but alas it's not available just yet other than that, there's a few customization options you can take for each class. You can change your character, change the dragon, change the dragon's armor even. Honestly, the customization looks to be fairly comprehensive, but of course, because it is closed beta at the minute, they're not actually allowing anybody to buy any cosmetics from the store. So I can't really explore this fully right now. It looks good though. Another really interesting thing about this game is that there seems to be this hatching system where you can just, I don't know if it's random, but you can like acquire these dragon eggs. And as you play, you essentially give the dragon egg half of your XP after you complete a match. Once it fills up, you then unlock a new dragon. I don't think there's any combat difference to the dragons or anything like that i think that could have been like an interesting thing for them to explore but it is early access it is beta so who knows what they've got in store for us down the line but yeah that's pretty much all the game has to offer at the moment i did see that there's going to be a ranked system which will hopefully be available when they release into early access in april but overall the game is pretty fun i mean it's a fairly unique one you know it's dragons what's not to love there and it is free to play, so you'll be able to jump in with your mates, have a couple games here and there. I'm honestly, personally, quite excited to see what other classes they have to add in. But for the time being, I suppose we're just going to have to wait and see. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have tried this game, if you're looking forward to it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.
you want to catch more from us at Arex Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.